I'll start my presentation on dehumanization and enforced disappearance of pro-democracy activists in 1998 in Indonesia. The question is, um, why uh, the enforced enforce disappearance is happening in, in a democratic state and also in a constitutional state that guarantees um, human freedom and protection of human rights. My presentation consists of how by parts, uh, background and for disappearance in context, international and national response, uh, national human rights mechanism, and the conclusion. Now I'm going to the first um, part of my presentation. Uh, background of my presentation is between 1996 and uh, 1997 to 1998. There, um, there were 24 students and other activists had been abducted by the army or special force command because of their activism in the struggle for the change and democracy in the new order government. Uh, this movement finally led to the reformation of the Indonesian state toward a modern democracy and the victim that gave their lives for this sense the first justice for the human rights violation by the sufferer. Late 1998, a military court was held to prosecute 11 members of Kopassus or Maur team who admit the crime or out of their, their uh, conscience. This team admitted the kidnapping of nine uh, activists but was unable to reveal the whereabouts the, the other uh, 14 victims. The team also denied they were uh, torturing the victims. The defendants were sentenced to, to 15 to 26 months of imprisonment and released from uh, Indonesian army. On May 24, 2007, the Supreme Court announced the appeal decision was Mahkamah Military 2 or the Hijack Military Tribunal 2 in Kraft van Gewiste uh, because no appeal. In fact, only one defendant of 11 members of the Maur team got additional to the uh, dismissal penalty. A few months after a tribunal, there were several personnel who received promotion and campaigns. Four of the actors were promoted to the highest military position and uh, Mr. Mann of the tragedy became Minister of Defense of present time regime. Mm -hmm. The national human rights mechanisms are stagnant. No one of the perpetrators held accountable. This led to impunity and set a bad precedent in upholding human rights in Indonesia. Um, the path to enforce disappearance in 1998 in Indonesia, the first one transition from authoritarian regime or, or the battle to democracy. The, the second one, uh, there, is, there were political crises. The third, a political aspiration often providing challenges and threat to the new order regime. A public notion, especially in military, that there was exist latent and perennial threats to the national security and stability. Now we have to look at uh, what sort of new order or the war regime in Indonesia. The new world there was the repressive development regime, and dictators uh, actually faced threat from the mass, masses over which they rule, and violence is the ultimate um, arbiter of conflict. And also, um, I inspired by uh, Rumel concept of democide uh, to see uh, whether the enforced disappearance 1998 in Indonesia actually match with the concept of Rumel. Rumel says that the murder of the person or people by a government, including genocide, politicide, is a mass murder. Actually, Suharto held in power nearly 20, uh, 32 years in power, uh, starting from March 1967 until May 1998. Uh, Suharto is known as the authoritarian government with a style of government loyal to the military. Incidentally, he has a military background. Uh, transition from authoritarian regime or new order to democracy, there is political crisis. Um, also, there is no human freedom at all. Now let's look at uh, the condition of freedom in Indonesia during um, new order. Um, there is a little um, about freedom and expression opinion during the new order. The new order regime was not used for not um, appreciating freedom of expression, especially in criticizing the, the ruler or Suharto. It may say that uh, the state is a terrible age. They're saying that uh, in this day and age, the walls have ears. 
it means um, you don't have to criticize the ugliness of uh, Sukarto, for example. As said by the Aspinal and fairly to two Australian scholars said that whoever criticized this regime, um, it unsafe or it can be disappear without trace. So there is sort of um, human freedom in Indonesia during 30, 32 years of Suharto era in Indonesia. Now let's look at uh, the enforced disappearance during 1998 in Indonesia. Um, it's meaning that uh, how the enforced disappearance that occurred in 1998 against pro-democracy activists in Indonesia. Pro-democracy activists are students and uh, who tried to being dictatorship and want to experience change. Um, they were kidnapped, uh, killed, and forcibly disappeared by uh, a team called Team Mawar or a group four of Kopassus or Special Force Command from uh, Indonesian Army. This team is uh, actually chaired by Prabowo Bosuwianto, who has been fired from his position as a member of Indonesian Army following the decision of the Office Officer Code of Ethics Council in 1999 with a sentence of dismissal from the military from the briefing others of freedom and kidnapping. Uh, the concept of uh, enforcing disappearance of poor when it's a person secretly abducted and imprisoned by the state or political organization or by third party with the authorization support or acquisition of a state or a political organization followed by a um, refusal to acknowledge the person's uh, fate whereabouts with the intent of placing the victim outside the protection of the law. And force or involuntary disappearance constitute the most comprehensive denial of human rights in our time, bringing boundless uh, agony to the victims, ruinous consequences to the families, both um, socially, psychologically, and moral uh, havoc to the societies in which they occur. Um, there are three elements of uh, enforced disappearance according to Office of Human uh, uh, Office High Commissioner of uh, Human Rights. The first one is the privation of liberty against the will of the person. Uh, actually, uh, the first picture explained this. Uh, the second one is involvement of government official, at least by uh, acquisitioners. Um, this is the ex explained by. Uh, Picture number two, actually Indonesian um, army, actually the mastermind or the actor of the, the kidnapping, the enforced disappearing of the uh, activists pro democracy in 1998, actually Suharto behind the, behind our, the order of uh, Suharto. The third one is refusal of to acknowledge the, the prevision of liberty of concealment of the fate of whereabouts of the disappeared person. Um, 13 of uh, kidnapped uh, activists are still missing right now, so no one know where where they were. They, uh, they are. This picture actually um, collected from Tirto 2020. Uh, there were 13 missing activists um, in 1998 and still unfound right now. Um, one of them actually found dead, and nine people have uh, been released by the kidnappers. Uh, all them uh, 33 people. Uh, I'm now moving to to explain the actors or government involvement in this uh, human tragedy. Uh, the activists were kidnapped by the member of Kopassus, they controlled by the um, Prabowo, but section of the army generally tolerated in the sum of cases even encouraged student protest. Basically, um, Prabowo is now the Minister of Defense of the Republic Indonesia under the Jokowi uh, regime for five years to go. Actually, uh, Prabowo involved uh, in the tragedy because he's the, the commander of the group four of the Mawar team. Uh, who actually kidnap and kill and enforce disappear of the activists of 1998 in Indonesia. Um, 
One of confidential document, uh, United States document date May 7, 1998, actually says that Suharto and Prabowo Subianto were involved in the enforcement disappearance of pro-democracy activists in Indonesia. Um, uh, some media also said that Prabowo ordered by Suharto to kidnap activists. After the tragedy, actually, the military courts um, bring um, some of the perpetrators to courts, but the Prabowo Subianto uh, was free. Uh, Prabowo Subianto actually um, never um, faced a, a trial on this tragedy. Um, because there's no actually legal process for the perpetrator, it means that there's a perpetuation of impunity in Indonesian human rights uh, violation. Since 1990, uh, 1999, um, the case of and for disappearance of activists in 1998 has been um, processed in the military court. 11 alleged perpetrators were convicted, but the mastermind of the perpetrators uh, of and for disappearance were never prosecuted before the law. Then the result of the military court cassation acquit all the perpetrators and only one who was convicted and dismissed from the military. Four of the perpetrators were then appointed to the high position in the military and were mastermind of the lawsuit to become candidates for the president of the Republic of Indonesia for the 2019 and 2024 period. But because he was not elected, he was finally appointed, appointed as a Minister of Defense of the Republic of Indonesia. Then the legal process regarding the case of upon disappearance of um, 98 activists is called stagnant because there is no good will uh, from the government in power to resolve it, and several steps have been carried out. Uh, we have to look to this picture. Actually, um, National Commission of Human Rights of the Republic of Indonesia actually uh, conduct investigation of the tragedy. And then all the investigation result was handed to the Internal General of Indonesia, but uh, this in institution always reviews with, uh, based on the reason that the investigation is incomplete. And the second uh, reason is that until now, there is no uh, human rights at hoc tribunal in Indonesia because actually the Indonesian government never ever uh, established uh, ad hoc human rights tribunal in Indonesia. So it is impossible to actually to bring the perpetrators into court. Um, after 22 years, uh, starting from 1998 to 2020, there are several steps actually uh, brought by Indonesian government to this um, tragedy. Uh, in, on April 6, 1999, military tribunal prosecuted 11 members of Kopassus or Timawar uh, group who uh, conduct um, kidnap, kill, and enforce disappearance of uh, 1998 Indonesian activists pro democracy. October 2006, uh, National Human Rights Commission or Komnasam. Uh, conduct investigation and um, give report on and for disappearance to Attorney General of Republic of Indonesia. And then January 5th, 2007, Attorney General respond to National Human Rights Commission saying that uh, the case cannot be proceeded because there is no ad hoc human rights tribunal in Indonesia uh, based on law number 26, uh, year 2006 on human rights tribunal. And then February 27, 2007, House Rep of Representatives or DPR established special committee, the committee to uh, regarding the case of enforced disappearance, but uh, it was ineffective. Um, the next step is February 21st, 2007, Constitutional Court released a decision that the Parliament has been informed to decide whether it is necessary to establish a uh, human rights court or tribunal in Indonesia. And then May 24, 2007, Supreme Court released 10 of uh, defendants on defendants. Only one member got this missile penalty. Uh, on September 15, 2009, uh, People Representative Council actually released a recommendation to the President of the Republic of Indonesia to establish ad hoc human rights tribunal. 
On September 15, 2009, the special committee of the disappeared persons because, uh, because of violence issued a recommendation to the president to search for um, 13 missing activists establish a network court of human rights and rehabilitate and provide compensation to the victims of the family, but it's never happened. Uh, again, in 2010, um, case back and forth from the National Human Rights Commission to the Attorney General Office because the result of the investigation are incomplete and, the, and there's no ad hoc human rights court or tribunal and the case is nebis, is, nebis, is, nebis in idem. It means there is no door uh, for, to, to process um, human rights. Uh, no, uh, sorry. There is no door, open door for um, enforced disappearance case in Indonesia to process legally. Again, in August 2015, the Attorney General report that the 1998 and 40 disappearance case was still being discussed so that it could be carried out through reconciliation or non-judicial channel. So from 19 to 2015 until 2020, mm -hmm. there is no process uh, of this case anymore. Uh, what actually uh, the consequences of the and court disappearance. The first one, physically, uh, this is the testimony from one of the victims released by the kidnappers. Uh, basically, I suffered so much that I could no longer feel pain, and mentally, I was going down and the lowest point. A disappearance not only constitutes an arbitrary deprivation of freedom, but also represents serious danger to the person, integrity, safety, and the life of the victims. Uh, until now, the family of the victims still seeking for justice and reconciliation. The victim's family has pursued various ways to seek justice and reconciliation, but the government actually lack of political will to establish a human rights tribunal. The government also has um, concluded that the, the case is a nebis in idem case. It means that no, uh, no more legal process for the case. Uh, what is the national international response on, on the report disappearance 1998 in Indonesia? The Commission for Missing Person and Violence or Contrast and the Association of Families of Kidnapper Victims attended the 59th session in Geneva, Switzerland, to campaign for abduction and cases and forced disappearance in Indonesia. But during the meeting, the Indonesian Minister of Foreign Affairs regret why this case was brought to the UN and ask the victim families to hand over the settlement of this case to the Indonesian government. Um, the State Department said that the issue of a forced disappearance in Indonesia cannot be resolved because many other jobs are more urgent and more important, namely solving the economic crisis. This is a very strange reason of the, from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia during the, the meeting in Geneva. Uh, now I'm moving to the impact on individual and family and society of uh, and post disappearance in 1998. The first one, the family and relatives suffers from severe mental distress and they had to go through the roller coaster of hope and despair while searching for the victim. The family of the victim also never knows whether the son or daughter is still alive and the parents of the victim never know whether they can be found. Um, the culture of enforced disappearance perpetuates injustice in society and feeling of loneliness finds, it is, finds its way in people's mind. Uh, people also lose faith in judiciary and execute branches of the government. People also develop abhorrence and incredulity towards law and force and hence become reluctant to seek help. The kind of impunity with which the crime of enforced disappearance is being carried out opens the floodgate for other crimes like kidnapping and abduction in the future. Uh, now I'm giving uh, some solution for this human tragedy or enforced disappearance case in 1998 in Indonesia. The first one, um, Indonesian government must ratify the Convention Against Enforced Disappearance as a form of commitment to seek, find, return victims, and stop the um, practice of enforced disappearance in Indonesia, as well as prosecute and dismiss suspected perpetrators of past human rights violation. violation. 
The second one, uh, Indonesian government must implement the recommendation from the special committee for the disappearance, disappear established by the House of Representatives of the Republic of Indonesia in 2009 as a whole. The first one establishing um, a network human rights court. The second one still searching for uh, 13 people who are still declared missing by uh, National Human Rights Commission. And the third, uh, Indonesian government must provide rehabilitation and compensation to the families of the victims of and for disappearance. And uh, the last one is um, by strengthening the synergy between uh, state institutions, namely the uh, People Cons Consultative Assembly, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Ministry of Law and Human Rights to accelerate the process of deliberating the ratification of the International Convention of Protection of all Persons from the Crime of, of enforced disappearance. Um, now I'm coming to the conclusion. The first one, main cause of the 1998 for disappearance uh, is authoritarian government, uh, new era, new order. This because the tra transition to democracy from authoritarian government, the victim has not been found. I mean, uh, 13 victim has not been found until now. Uh, genocide took, pl uh, took place within the context of Indonesian authoritarian regime, and the impact of this um, human tragedy, tragedy also for, to the victims, family, and also to the society as a whole. Uh, 